LG. Let's have a good talk. What's going on, my peeps? Boy Versatile is back with another video. Back here to talk about the LG Wing that they unveiled today. Yes, it's the first phone under their Explore project, and it's their third dual screen phone. One that certainly, certainly, certainly switches the game up a little bit. May I add, LG was the first to do this same design. As you guys saw, Iron Man was the first movie to actually showcase this swivel technology with the phone. So, I mean, if LG isn't already on top of things when it comes to uh, <laughs> swivel, swivel. Now, I will say, I don't care for the dual screen too much, but the swivel, I like, all right? So this LG Wing is pretty, pretty cool. So today's September 14th. They unveiled that, I guess, earlier today. So far, I haven't really seen too many people talk about it, which is a little surprising, but let's talk about it here on this channel. Yes, it is, it's, it's a difference maker. It doesn't fold, right, like the Galaxy Z Flip, but what it does do is provide a new way or it innovates on being able to multitask in a different way that I think we would appreciate in the long run. So let's get into it. It's coming to Verizon, T-Mobile and AT&T. The first notable choice LG makes is to stick with a 765G processor. Now, this isn't the first time they've done that, of course, because I believe the Velvet and the, well, I guess the Velvet for sure, is not rocking the A65. And I think why LG's going that route is to save on the price of the device. As we know, prices have gone up for phones because of the processor. And so with LG opting for the 765, although price hasn't been unveiled for the wing yet, I think we're gonna see this phone probably one of, the, I think what the first or second phone that LG's launched that will hit that $1,000 price point, which isn't bad considering all that you're getting and the technology that is presenting. In terms of specs, 6.8 inch display, full HD, OLED. The internal or smaller secondary display is 3.9 inches, basically four inches, also OLED display. So that's also pretty nice that we're getting really good resolution and <clears throat> quality out of both displays should be expected from a display maker in LG. It's gonna have eight gigs of RAM, 256 gigs of storage, and a 4,000 milliamp battery. Oh. And when you look at the thickness of this phone, it's just a hair thicker than the Galaxy S20 Ultra. So you're not even getting some premier big old package. You're getting a, a nice sized, you know, I guess you could say hefty phone that has a screen that swivels out. Now, some of the use cases that we've seen with this swivel mode that they're displaying is through their cameras. Yes, the main shooter is a pop-up selfie, or I guess it also shoots kind of back in, and you know, when the screen is swiveled, you'll see the camera module there. It's a 32 megapixel selfie shooter. That's not bad, that's pretty good. But the reason why swivel mode makes so much sense when it comes to the cameras is because you can actually dual record. So on the back end, you have a 64 megapixel main camera, a 12 megapixel, you know, main ultra ride, and then you have a 13 megapixel, like dedicated ultra wide for swivel mode or gimbal mode. And that's where, with it being swivel, you're holding on to the basically the smaller screen portion, and you can control the cameras via like like the little on screen joysticks and stuff like that. And you could do a record. So you could record yourself reacting to whatever you are recording. That's pretty neat. So the main display now becomes just unhindered by everything. It's just free landscape mode display that presents you everything you need. That is awesome. Like, whoa, I like this. And again, it's because it's not crazy. Now 6.8 inches is like, you know, on like the note size of things. And that's why I opted for a flip phone in this fashion. Of course, I would have liked to try and or get the Z Fold 2, you know what I'm saying? But nonetheless, 
6.8 inches, you're getting a nice sizable display and package there. And then when you think about the other use cases, YouTube, right? Calendar, Google Maps, some of the things that they've shown the display, gaming, all the minor details can be displayed on that smaller display, giving you a completely free, uh, non-distracting display of whatever it is that you're trying to do. I like this approach and hopefully other people in terms of uh, other people, developers get in on optimizing their software or their apps for the LG Ring, like we hope will take place both for the Galaxy Z Flip and the Galaxy Fold series, because that's really where everything in terms of this new technology falls apart, especially on the Android side of things, because even the Microsoft Surface Duo doesn't have a lot of, if not barely any outside of the Microsoft apps, software optimized apps to take advantage of the dual screens. So when it comes to full technology, like, yes, it's cool. Yes, it's great to adopt and to try and, and invest in. It's just a problem that on top of Android already kind of being on the slower side in terms of software optimization or software development, you know, behind Apple, it's even slower when you consider developers opting in to optimize software for flex mode or swivel mode slash gimbal mode for the LG wing or fold mode flex mode for the fold series or the duo with its peaking te uh, technology and tent mode. A lot of apps are not going to be optimized and who knows how long it actually takes for developers to feel enthusiastic about software optimization. So that's the one drawback to the LG wing, Samsung's foldables, Huawei's foldables, Microsoft's foldables, is that software. But outside of that, I know LG's on the back end trying to make sure specific apps are working well. Usually what we see out the gate is a fair amount of Google apps are optimized because it is Android. And then whatever LG's apps are or whatever the company is, in this case, we're talking about LG, they will have some apps optimized to take advantage of both screens. I sh you should not have a problem with multitasking on, on the phone. Cause I would imagine you can shoot one app to the <laughs> internal display or internal screen. And then you can shoot another app or two on the landscape mode display in swivel mode. Cause yeah, then you could technically have three apps running with no problems. So hopefully that's something that we'll be able to see LG actually tackle with all this because that's what makes all this exciting is that it's 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 different you know like I understand like Huawei is gonna change their approach to folding the the Mate um what is it, the Mate X I think I think they're gonna look at folding it similar to how Samsung folds it and then of course you got Samsung's foldables and flippables so it's gonna be interesting to see. I I really do though I do think that this phone is going to come in at about a thousand dollars, and it's not going to be badly priced because it's newer technology at at a more affordable price point. This sucker was fourteen hundred dollars. I wish it was two hundred dollars cheaper. The Fold series is crazy expensive, but it's it's well justified. Even though of course overall the price should drop like five hundred dollars within the next two years. The price should drop to about 15, 1600 for the fold, for the fold series. So price is going to be interesting, but I, I'm confident that the LG wing will be sub a thousand, eleven hundred dollars because of the technology that they're bringing. And this is the space I like LG in. One of the phones I never got to try, but I always wanted to try, well, two was the LG Flex and the LG G5. LG has always been experimenting with flexing and curving displays and it's kind of just being on the slight brink and edge of technology. And the G5 was approaching modularity for a smartphone, something that Google was attempting to do and then scrapped. So I, I really hope that LG with this Explore project that they've launched can launch more devices that are interesting and new like this that we're all, you know, actually like and or at least double take it. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I do like LG. I'm not like over enthusiastic about a lot of the phones like the G7, G8, not big on them. I was big on like the LG G2 and three and four back in the day, but you know, in the five and then like six, seven, eight, eh, the velvet's cool. 
the LG ring is dope. So yeah, let, let's get the conversation started. Let me know down in the comments below what you guys think about the LG ring. And if you are uh, interested in possibly trying out that device, or is it again, another foldable, flippable technology that you just still have, don't trust in here? Let me know down in the comments below. That's it for this video. Hopefully you guys again appreciate it, enjoyed it. If you haven't already, make sure you guys ignite the like button on this video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And make sure you guys hit that notification bell so that way YouTube informs you when I drop videos. Yes, YouTube won't let you know a thing. And let's do that notification bell. So go ahead and do that right there. With your boy Versal signing out. And until the next video. Wait for it.